Good morning creators and welcome to yet another UEFN tutorial. This time we are going to be covering landscaping. So when you open up your project, please enter your landscape mode. And inside of this uh, create new, um, this material is your default creative landscape. You can create your own material and we'll go over that in another episode because um, it's a little bit complicated. But the default uh, terrain should work pretty well for most of y'all. Um, once you go into this, I'm going to choose a pretty small size because that's all I need. I'm going to create and it'll take, it'll take a moment to create the terrain. Once you're inside, uh, we have a set of tools, as you can see up here, for sculpting. Uh, we're going to choose the basic sculpt mode. I'm going to decrease the brush size and the tool strength. This is going to create a pretty gradual hill. If you increase the tool strength, it's going to create a very fastly built hill, basically. Um, which is great for mountains. Um, next off, if you want to increase the fall off, that's going to create more gradual hills. And if the fall off is very low, it's just going to be a circle essentially. Very, very sharp. You can change the shape that the brush is. Uh, for example, this setting uses the alpha, which is the white color, and you can import any texture for this. And it's going to basically create a texture shaped pattern. And then there's the already mapped landscape filter. And that's going to create kind of the structured pattern because it's already mapped the terrain. If you want to work with the entire landscape component, I don't really recommend doing this because it's kind of annoying to, get to work with. Um, but it basically does this. Um, I wouldn't recommend using this. And when you're working in sculpt mode, you can do shift click to create divots, which is a pretty useful tool, I think. Um, any divots within your terrain. Shift click, and this is click, shift click, click. Next off, we're gonna go into erase mode. If you don't like this terrain you made, you can easily just erase it. Um, you can change the brush size and the fall off, of course. That's with all the trains. You can uh, then go to smooth mode. Let's say I didn't like this, how sharp this was. Smooth mode is for that. So I might want to reduce my tool strength, but I can just quickly smoothen out this hill to be very, very smooth, as smooth as I want it to be. And I'll keep smoothing out until, I want, until I'm satisfied. Um, if you want to go into flatten mode, flatten mode is really useful. Uh, essentially, all you gotta do is select your flatten mode. This one's both, so it's gonna flatten both the top and move up the bottom to flatten out. So you'll see it'll flatten out this and the top and the bottom. If you just wanna do lower, you can select the point of height and it'll lower all of them to that height. If you wanna choose raise, you select the point you wanna raise to and it'll raise to that point. Of course, you want to change the fall off or the height, that's up to you. And it can work like that. Ramp mode, which is pretty neat, lets you select from one point and then select another point, and it'll create a ramp. Now, the width determines how wide the ramp is, and the fall off percentage determines how smooth the sides will be. So, for example, if I add a ramp here, it's pretty sharp. But if I wanted to make a really uh, smooth fall off, like that, I might need to add more width to it just so that it's smoother at the site. And you'll see we have a very smooth ramp. Next you can go into erosion mode. I don't recommend using this one, it's just very, very strong, um, but it quickly erodes terrain. Um, if you want to use a similar effect, I recommend using Hydro instead. It's a lot more uh, smooth, and it's just, it's just better to work with, in my opinion. Yes, Hydro is a better version. Uh, it's pretty simple how it works. Of course, there's different settings you can add, but in general, um, you can mess around with that. Noise is going to create 
some new um, textures to it. So, for example, this one's in sub mode. Um, if I go to add mode, it's going to create a new landscape. If I increase the strength, it's going to be a very jagged landscape, as you see. That's noise. Um, I don't recommend using this one just because it adds more vertices and it's just it, it's just really jagged looking. It's a little bit jarring. Um, but if that's what you want, then go ahead. Um, if you want to go into visibility, you can actually basically turn terrain invisible. And this is good if you want to create like underground bases uh, and you don't want to like shape terrain around that. Um, of course, there's mirror mode. And this is going to allow you to mirror your map. Pretty simple. And it mirrors it around the terrain. So for example, if I do that and I apply, it's going to mirror it to uh, the end of this. If I moved it a little bit closer, hit apply, it would mirror this. Um, so it's pretty useful if you need to copy terrain to make it even for both sides of a game. Um, if you go into select mode, this allows you to just select a certain portion of terrain. Let's say I just want, um, first off, turn regionized mask on. Um, select this. Maybe stronger to tool strength. And negative mask. Mix it so you can uh, see the rest of the terrain. Um, once you've done that, you can select any of these and it'll only affect this zone. Uh, for example, we can use copy mode and we are going to first um, fit gizmo to selected regions and copy data to gizmo. Um, once we've done that, we can actually move this around. We want to clear the region selection and turn region as mask off. And now with this brush, we can fill in the terrain and it's an exact copy of what we just copied. And then we can clear Gizmo data and you see it's an exact copy. If you go into paint mode, you'll see that the default material we imported with has six layers and these layers are like paint. For example, this is the dirt layer and the dirt layer is pretty basic. If you, uh, if you shift click, it'll turn to the default layer, which is grass. So if you're looking for grass in here, don't worry, it's still here. Just shift click to do grass. Uh, of course you have dirt and sand, asphalt, and uh, this is kind of foresty terrain. And then finally, just a rocky, uh, rocky texture. So you can combine these to create really unique, different kinds of terrain looks, different biomes. Uh, so I recommend using those whenever you can. Um, when it comes to adding water to your maps, it's a pretty simple thing. Go to content drawer under Fortnite environment. There is water. For example, if I want to import a lake, I can easily do that here. If I want to have it up here, for example. And you'll see it automatically fits the terrain around it to, uh, to this lake size. If you want to change the shape of it, you can always move this around or change the curves on this side, which will create these kinds of uh, bends. If you want to add another vertices, you just click on it right click, duplicate, and you can move it around. And you can create really interesting lakes using this. Um, of course, you can change this. Uh, if you move it closer, it changes the curve amount. Um, if you move it around, it changes the curve flow, I guess, direction. And that's how you create a lake. It'll automatically show up when you're in-game. It doesn't show up when you're editing, obviously. Um, and when it comes to adding rivers, it's also a simple process. Just go to content drawer, grab a river, and drag it on. You'll notice the river is...
kind of floating and it's creating terrain just in the middle of the air. So the way to fix that is just to lower these splines, lower them all down, and that should create a river that is flowing with this shape. You see the shape right here? And the river will flow however it wants in this uh, little divot here. So once you join the game, you'll see the water. Um, and of course, this was the landscape tutorial. My name is Maestro Shark. If you want to help out the channel, feel free to subscribe, like, and leave a comment suggesting what the next tutorial should be. I hope you all have an amazing day.